Hey everybody, this is Keisha with Lakeisha Keen Saving Greens and today I need to plant a round of fall veggies to put out in my fall garden. So I just wanted to bring you along and show you some of the process. Some of you have seen this before, some of you may have not. Actually this time I'm trying something even more interesting this time. So. Stick with me, I'm gonna show you everything that I'm gonna be using. And these are the things that I'm gonna be planting right here. We have red giant mustard greens, dazzling blue kale, pink swiss chard, purple cauliflower, cabbage, that's a uh, cord de bleu. And then we have uh, red acre cabbage, purple broccoli, green swiss chard. We have red Russian kale, we have Georgia collards, and some spinach, this is a hybrid. And also, not in a package, I harvested some red swiss chard seeds out of the garden so water and then I have this what was it a ricotta cheese container I'm gonna be using that to make my labels uh, marker scissors and on the other side here sand and this is where it gets really interesting you guys so I'm gonna use this play sand that I got now I made a video once before where I put starter mix in my tray in one of these trays here and then I just topped it off with the sand and there's a lot of reasons why I did that and I'll get into that later but this time I'm not using any starter mix at all we're gonna go straight sand and we're gonna sprout and grow these for my fall garden using just sand so Stick with me, you guys. It's gonna be an interesting video today. Okay, you guys, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this container. It's just a ricotta uh, cheese container. I'm just gonna use this for my tags. I'm just gonna cut this. You guys, this is just a cheap, easy, I mean, if you have these kind of containers, like uh, sour cream containers and things like that, there's some real cheap, easy way to make labels or tags for keeping up with what you have planted. So I'm just gonna get these cut and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so all I did basically was just cut some little points on the end here uh, so that it can go down in the sand a lot easier. And I'm just gonna write on the blank side here the name of everything. I have my marker right here for that. First, I wanna put the water in the bottom of the tray here just so I know how much water is gonna be in here. And once I get the sand in there, it, is, it, it will absorb the water. So the first part of this video, I showed you that I just was using play sand. It's pre-washed play sand. Uh, it's, it cost me about, I think it was $6 and change for this big bag. Uh, I don't know how many pounds the bag is. I can't see that from here. I'll put it up on the uh, on the screen though so you can see uh, how many pounds that is but this will go far uh, for one it saves me a step because if you watched my other video anytime I use any kind of starter mix or potting soil I'll always rule of thumb always use boiling hot water to run through it um, because there's always like fungus gnats and others you know mold spores and just whatever in that soil, mostly for me, I don't like getting fungus gnats. I hate them things. <laughs> and so I will just take some hot boiling water and get a bowl or a bucket or something, and put your soil in there that you're gonna use and just flush it with that water. Um, and that will kill off whatever larvae um, or eggs or um, fungus gnats that's inside that soil. 
you guys, I had one too many times of um, fungus gnats just coming in, invading my home because of that. Because uh, they were in the soil that I bought at the store. So, yeah. I don't do that one anymore. <laughs> I always. But see, with this, I don't have to worry about doing that because fungus gnats do not like sand. And so that's why I use sand. Whenever I have, uh, I get new plants or anytime I transplant some plants in my house, I always have use sand on the surface of the soil in the pot and on the bottom too because like I said before they are persistent little creatures and they will um, go in from the bottom of your pots to get to the soil if they if they have to so I love the turnout that I, I got the last time when I used the sand it just and it wasn't the first time that I used sand. I've used sand before when starting things because of that, for that very reason, because of the fungus nets. And um, I figured, well, if it helps to put the sand on the top of the soil, then it most likely will help to, you know, if I planted the seeds down in the sand, it most likely would help to, keep the fungus gnats away from my seedlings. Fungus gnats is no joke. You guys, they will get in and they will lay their eggs in the soil and those eggs will hatch out little larvae and those little larvae will start eating at the roots of your plants, of your seedlings or your plants. Already the sand is absorbing the water. These are already saturated. <laughs> I can feel it on there as I'm putting the sand in. You guys, I'm just being extremely careful because I forgot to put a tarp down under my table here and I just didn't want to get my carpet all full of sand. So I'm just being extra careful. It really wouldn't take you this long to do it if you have a, a designated table already that you use for planting stuff on or if you have if you're outdoors or whatever it wouldn't take this long I'm just being extra careful because I'm trying not to make a mess <laughs> and lately that's all I'm able to do is make huge messes so <laughs> I'm trying not to make a mess is all now the reason why I put the water in first the way that I did was because I don't wanna to have to put water after I put the seeds in, cause some seeds are small and I don't want them to get washed away. I'm not gonna to top water any of this. This is gonna be a 100% bottom water thing. <laughs> Look at already making a mess. <laughs> and I'm trying not to. Trying not to get the sand all over the place. So since I'm doing this, 100% sand, no soil at all. I don't have to worry about fungus gnats trying to get under, in between and under this tray to get at the soil part of it. So that's a good thing. So I don't have to put sand in the bottom of the tray. Last In my last video that I did, I put sand in the bottom of the tray. I don't need to do that this time. You guys, that's Max in the background, crying. <laughs> he wants some attention. Max, for those of you who don't know, is my cat. <laughs> he adopted us. He just popped out of nowhere and just said, okay, this is my home now. And this is where he stayed. He has an appointment at the end of the week, this week, to get fixed. I do that with all of my pets they all get fixed because we're not trying to help boost the populations you guys I'm not exactly a perfectionist but I do like stuff done a certain way 
I guess that kind of makes me, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and measure out each one. But I like it to at least look uniform and even, you know. Okay, so let's see. We're going to start with spinach. I have had no luck with growing spinach. I've tried all different things. I've tried starting it indoors. I've tried uh, direct sowing it outside. I've tried springtime, fall time. I, I, I just don't know. And I'm running out of seeds to keep trying, you know. Maybe this time will work. So I'm just gonna put these in. Lightly just put them on top here. And press them down and then I'll cover them over and like I said the sand is already saturated which is good it's already nice and moist so now that I got those seeds down on there like so then I'm gonna go on ahead and I'm gonna fill in the I'm not gonna put the top layer of so, uh, sand on it yet. Okay, I'm just gonna write on here what this is this is spinach and then I'm gonna put the date. Today is my today is my daughter's birthday. It's the 12th, so 10, 12. And that goes there. Uh -huh. So now I'm just gonna go on ahead and move on and do the rest of these the same way. I'm not even burying these uh, seeds in deep either. They're just basically on the top. And then I'm just gonna add some more sand on top of that to cover them over. And then that's it. When I do the other one, I'm gonna show you closer up how fast the sand uh, absorbs this water. I mean, it's quick. And that's another reason why I like sand. So I'm going to get into that right now. Uh, reasons why I like sand, the sand. Look, I even wrote, uh, made notes on my phone. Because I'm like, okay, I don't want to forget to say something. I want to make sure that I wrote it down so I, I have in mind. Like, okay, so I don't miss out on stuff. Now, my last video that I did was pretty informative, but I wanted to make this one add some more additional information onto this video. So it's not like you're watching the same thing over again. Okay, so this one is the cabbage. I'm going to put this seed, little seed by seed in here. And yeah, I'm only putting one seed at a time, you guys. <laughs> because I really don't need a whole lot of cabbage. Um, because we really just don't go through a lot of cabbage that way. So I'm just doing this one seed at a time. You know, on the little tiny seeds even. Okay, so this one is the... De boo. Okay, so as I'm planting this next cabbage, then we'll talk about how does this work. Okay, so I didn't realize this at first, but uh, the seeds will, uh, they don't need light to grow and they don't need soil to grow, most of them. Uh, you can start seeds without any light. I could cover all this, this whole tray. I could plant these seeds in here and cover the tray and there'd be no light on this tray. And these seeds will still sprout um, regardless. So it really boggled my mind that, oh, okay, <laughs> well, they don't really need soil because everything that the seeds need or the, the seedling will need is found or already 
inside the seed itself. So they don't need any fertilizer or anything like that in order for them to sprout and start to grow. Everything they need is contained in these little seeds. So that's basically how it can work because the sand is only offering um, something for it to, uh, it is only offering something to hold the moisture, lock in the moisture for the seeds because that is one thing they do need is a lot of moisture in order to sprout. You guys, that's just for a limited time too. You can't, I can't leave these in here this whole time. As soon as the seeds sprout and the seedlings get their true, their first true leaves, then I can transplant them into soil and for them to um, grow. What I'm going to do though is just to see how long that they will grow in the sand here. I'm going to have this half one tray because there's like two separate trays here. So one tray, one half of this tray, I'm going to um, transplant out into the yard. And then the other half, I'm just going to allow to stay and continue to grow in the sand and just see how long they will uh, last in just the sand. If I can keep them in the sand here and just transplant them when they're big enough, like three, four inches tall, then put them out into the garden, then I'll be happy. But I don't know if that is possible. I don't know if it's best to get them when they're like an inch tall, as um, soon as their true leaves start and then put them out. So we'll see. That's something that um, if you're interested in, in finding out, then I will be putting uh, update videos for you so that you can see what happens with it. Okay, so some other facts. Let's see. They only need moisture and temperature is important for their growth, to, for the seeds to sprout and start. And you know that that's something that is true because there are a lot of people who start their seeds, they sprout them using just a paper towel and uh, a moist paper towel that they stick inside of a plastic baggie and those seeds still sprout. Um, and then they plant those into soil, into either solo cups or little um, plant containers or out in the garden or whatever. So they don't need the soil and they don't need the sunlight. When their starter makes, there's so much potential for growing more stuff than just the seed that you planted in it. You know, that's when you get mold, bacteria, fungus, algae. Now with the sand, algae still will grow or can grow on the top, but it doesn't hurt it. But you won't get mold, which is good. And there's no fungus, so that's why it's not really conducive to fungus snacks. They don't have a place to eat and put their young. So let's see, I have room enough for one more on this part of the tray. So I'm gonna put this pink Swiss chard in here and then we're gonna cover this over. You guys, I kept playing this video um, in my planning process. I kept playing this video over and over in my mind, <laughs> what I wanted to say. And I'm like, okay, but usually like what happens is I turn on the record button and everything that was so eloquently laid out that I had, you know, just arranged so well in my mind goes out the window. <laughs> and then I can't remember what I'm trying to say. And then I'll go back and I'm like, oh, I forgot to say this thing or that thing. So I said, okay, let me just make some notes this time. One of the reasons why I just cannot stand fungus gnats, all you need is a few. And they procreate so quickly and reproduce so quickly 
that you end up with an infestation within days. It's just crazy. I'm always about trying not to make anything comfortable for fungus gnats. That goes for all my house plants as well as the things that I start in the house and grow in the house. Anything that's gonna be in the house is gonna have sand on it. For whatever reason, gnats don't like the feel of the sand. I don't know why. Uh, someone said it could be because of the little grains. Each little individual grain is sharp, but I really, I couldn't tell you. All I know is they don't dig down in it. As soon as I put a layer of sand on top of a plant, on top of the soil, I mean, uh, those fungus gnats just disappear. They, they take off because they, they don't even bother. That was one of the other reasons why I like sand. It's very effective. I tried so many different things and ways to get rid of fungus gnats and combat them. And this was the most effective way that I found. Now, is it for everybody? Probably not. I mean, if you have a lot of house plants, I don't, I could probably count how many house plants I have on both my hands. Um, so it, it's not a bother for me to add sand onto the tops of my plants and then, or transplant my plants and put sand in, inside the bottom of the container and on top of the container. It doesn't bother me to do that because I don't have a lot of plants. I don't have a lot of big house plants either. Like some people have trees and big bushy house plants and stuff. I don't have that either. So it, it makes it a little bit more easy for me, but it works. <laughs> it works very, very well. And then lastly, the sand helps control the moisture. I was telling you how the sand already absorbed the water. And this is all really soak through. When I get the seeds in there and I get them covered, they'll be in a bed of moisture, right? And it'll stay moist like that. I won't have to water every day to keep it moist. Um, it'll stay like that. I'll be watering every two days uh, in order for it to, to keep the moisture level. But it really is great because I like that I don't have to water every day. <laughs> Because you know what? I can't even remember stuff sometimes. You know, my memory and my... I, sometimes I have so many things going on in my mind that it'll slip my mind. So, I'm thankful that I don't have to water every day. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm putting this pink Swiss chard down in here. So, once I get this covered, these are probably going to be about a quarter of an inch deep which is fine most seeds require about that much depth when they're planted anyway so that's fine so actually i'm just gonna put this sand over the top of the seeds like so and just Make sure that they're covered. Another thing that I like to about sand is that I can reuse it. I mean, I could do that with the starter mix too, but I like that I can do that as well with the sand. You can definitely feel fall in the air. This is my favorite time of year because all the trees and stuff, the leaves start to change colors and I love it. Okay, so that half is done. <laughs> And now I'm gonna do this other half and get these other ones planted, but I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna bring you in close so you can see how fast this sand absorbs water. Okay, you can see the water down in the little cups here. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this sand on here. And I won't get it all full the whole thing full but I'll get a few of the cups here full enough that you can see you can see that the drink the sand is dry as I'm putting it on here it's dry and loose that's another good uh, thing about sand is that it's loose and it dry when it dries it dries loose too that's why I'm trying to, I won't water the tops of these. 
uh, only bottom water them. <laughs> so as you can see in this one especially, look, you can see already the the sand absorbed the water that was down in there. The sand is no longer loose, see? So it's pretty fast how it absorbs. It's pretty, pretty fast. And it will stay moist like that, but not drowning the seeds, not overwatering the seeds or overpowering them with water. It stays just a really, keeps a really nice moisture, uh, moistness to it that the seeds desire for their start. So, okay, I'm gonna get the rest of this tray filled in with sand and get it ready for me to, um, oh, and I'm gonna plant the seeds and label everything. And then I'll come back to you when all that is finished, okay? And show you what I've got. So this is what we're left with, you guys. It's all planted in there. All the seeds are covered over. And as you can tell, the tops of the sand is nice and moist. So we shall see. I already know that everything will grow in this. Um, I just don't know for how long. So that's something that I'm testing out to see how long I can uh, stretch it <laughs> before having to put it outside. So we'll see about that. All right, you guys. So this is how I start my seeds indoors. And um, let me know if you guys have tried this before. If you've, or if you, uh, normally grow or start your seeds in sand like this. Uh, let me know if it's the first time you've ever heard of it. <laughs> you know, um, I guess it's not something that is widely done or talked about. So let me know if you're gonna try this out for yourself and let me know your results too in the comments. You guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm gonna try and condense it down so it's not a, a long, dragged out video but you know I can talk sometimes a lot <laughs> or I talk slow I think and that's why it just takes up a lot of time but you guys if you haven't tried this if you haven't tried growing your seeds starting your seeds in sand try it out I always say experiment try things out see how it works that's what I do um, see how it works and if you like it then you know, there might be some you want to do all the time. Once again, the rundown of the benefits, you're not going to get mold. It's not going to have fungus. You're not going to have fungus gnats. It's reusable. You get a big bag. I've only used a little bit of this bag. I have so much sand left over that I can use it for many, many plantings. The fact that I can reuse this is a plus too so hey sand works <laughs> i will bring you some updates on this so that you can see for yourself the progress of how this works and stuff so thanks for watching Maybe he'll call his brother.